Hello, I'm Christine, and welcome to Stories I Ate This Month. Off the hook, but the phone never rang. Beast on the beats, no claws, no fangs. It hasn't been the best reading month for me. I thought I only read one book, but it turns out I read three. I'm reading a fourth, but it's just been a very wonky mental health month for me. I've had a really hard time trying to read, even though I've wanted to read. So that's been shit. But I watched a lot of TV shows. I watched some movies. We're coming up on the Oscars. An exciting pop culture time. Bring your crew and fight the whole game. I'm First book I finished this month was our book explosion. February book of the month. This is a month we're working with QuirkBooks and we read This Is Not The Jess Show by Anna Carey. It's a very hard one to explain without spoiling. I feel like I was spoiled by just knowing the concept and I wish I didn't because I think I would have had much more fun with it. But like as is, I knew the concept and I was just like waiting for it the whole time. It's got a black mirror vibe. It's about this girl Jess. She's in high school and she's constantly at the center of a ton of drama even though she doesn't ever go looking for it. She's living in the year 1998. There's a lot of nostalgia for anyone who grew up in the 90s. I was only seven for most of 1998 and a lot of the things came over me in waves like, whoa, I forgot about that. Whoa, oh my God, that trend, that fad, which was fun. I'll read you a bit of the synopsis. Between a new crush on her childhood best friend, overprotective parents cramping her social life and her younger sister's worsening health, the only constant in Jess's life is change. And her hometown of Swickley, it's getting weirder by the day. Half the town is sick with a mysterious flu. Conversations come to an end awkwardly when Jess walks into the room. It's weird and Jess does not know how to explain it to herself And then one day one of her best friends drops something from her backpack and it's this like really sleek black device with an Apple logo on it But the iPhone is not supposed to be invented for another nine years and it gets really intense If you're into like Black Mirror Twilight Zone feels definitely check this one out The first movie I watched was One Night in Miami. It was excellent. It's Regina King's directorial debut Leslie Odom Jr. plays one of the leads and he is so great. Everyone in this film is so great. It's directed beautifully. It feels a lot like a play. Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Jim Brown, and Sam Cooke all end up in Miami on the same night. They meet up and hang out in this hotel room and end up talking about the civil rights movement and having this really meaningful night together. I don't know why it wasn't one of the best picture nominations. And I wanted Regina King to be nominated for best director. It was nominated for best screenplay and I think Leslie Odom Jr. was nominated. He is excellent. Definitely gets an A. It's on Amazon Prime. The next book that I finished this month was The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren and I absolutely loved this book. It was so good. I think it falls like a sliver under the unhoneymooners for me on the Christina Lauren scale. I loved it so much though. I had just the best time diving into it every night. I was so sad when I finished it. I was in a little bit of a book morning period after this. The Soulmate Equation is about a dating app that matches you scientifically based on certain markers for compatibility in your DNA. It gives you percentage matches and you can pick what your base percentage is. Like if you're just looking for fun and dating, you can put your base percentage around like 30%. But if you're looking for like a serious partner, you can put your base around 70%. There's all different tiers. Research about how long people stay together based on their percentage compatibility. It's so cool. I wish this existed because it would be the coolest. Oh my gosh. Like I love the science behind it. And the characters are so great. You have to read it. Oh, this is an art. Oh, it comes out 5 18 21. It comes out soon in May, May 18th. The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lord, it's so good. The next TV show I watched is one I just forgot to talk about in my last story as I ate, and that's Bridgerton. And I don't have much to say that everyone hasn't said already other than I very much enjoyed myself. I just really love the present day spunk that they inject into the situations. It's very much Gossip Girl in the 1800s with much more diversity. It's got a great soundtrack and I just had the best time binging it. Gets an A from me. For like the first three episodes, I was staring at the lead girl. I I can't remember their name. That lead girl who's getting married. I couldn't place her. And then it finally clicked that she was the daughter from Younger. What a relief. I was like, why do I know her? Why do I know her? I wanted to figure it out myself. And then eventually I did. I'm proud of that. The next movie I watched was Always and Forever, Lara Jean. Oh my gosh, what a perfect book to movie adaptation. I felt warm and fuzzy and giggly the entire time I was watching it. This is one of those rare cases that I actually think the movie was better than the book. The movie was fantastic and it gave me so many coming of age feelings. While the book is cute, the movie is like, yes. If you haven't watched it yet, I don't know why you haven't. I'm upset I haven't been able to watch it a second 
fucking time. Yeah. A plus. A plus. A, it's my favorite movie, I think, out of the three. Always a Forever Lara Jean. Then Do All the Boys I Love Before. And then P.S. I Still Love You is how I'd rank those movies. They're all good. The first one is great. The third one's amazing. <laughs> Stuck the landing. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of Jenny. Right after I watched it, I wanted to make a video about it, but I couldn't because I was drowning. <laughs> there's so many things to talk about and there's so many little details that they switched a little bit that made the plot hit harder. Adding NYU and her wanting to go to New York. I believe she wants to go to Chapel Hill in the book. There was so much more Kitty in this movie and she was perfect. Like I just, the scene where she walks into Lara Jean's closet stands out so much. It was just such a perfect little sibling touch. I watched Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. <laughs> what a weird ride this was. I loved Bridesmaid. This one was very weird. Like I enjoyed myself because it goes so hard. It commits so hard to the weirdness that it works. But the whole time you're kind of like, what? <laughs> okay. Whoa, okay. Oh, okay. There are moments that are funny, but it's not like I'm cackling funny. It's like, oh, they, they're doing this. Okay. This is wacky and wild and it's kind of working and I can't believe it's working sort of funny. At the end of it, I wasn't like, whoa, that was great. I was like, whoa, I don't know what I watched, but they made it work somehow. I'm gonna give it a B, because I didn't love it or anything, but I thought that the friendship between the two leads, the way they babbled off of each other was really fun, especially in the beginning. Those beginning scenes with the two best friends were like my favorite in the whole film. I watched The Kid Detective, starring Adam Brody, Seth Cohen from The O.C. He plays a washed up detective, basically. So he was the detective for this little small town when he was a kid, and he was renowned for how great of a detective he was. When he was a child. And now he's this grown man that is still trying to live off of that fame from when he was a kid detective. He's not really getting many cases. All he wants to do is be taken seriously and he's finally given a shot at a murder case. It's a really good film. Of course, anytime I see Seth Cohen, I'm expecting to see Seth Cohen, which is dumb. And I know it's Adam Brody, it's not Seth Cohen. I expected the comedy to be a little lighter, but it's a dark comedy. So if you don't wanna watch a dark comedy, you're gonna come out of it being like, wow, that was dark. It was good, I'm gonna give it an A minus. I liked where it went and I had fun following the mystery. Next, I read and finished and book talk Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, the second book in her last hour series. I'm not gonna go into this much because I have a literally 45 minute book talk that I hope you'd go and watch and comment and chat with me about all the things that happened in this book because I have so many dramatic, intense feelings for everything that went down. I've already spent hours and hours and hours and hours of my life venting about them in this video and editing this video. So if you haven't seen that, I'd really appreciate you giving it a watch. If you've read the book, the link is in the description. Next, I wanna quickly touch on the fact that the paperback edition of my first novel, Again But Better, is coming out so soon now. It comes out April 6th. You can pre-order it now. The paperback is pink and it has a bonus chapter if you haven't heard yet. The bonus chapter comes right after the final chapter and before the epilogue. I had so much fun writing it. I hope you enjoy it. I can't wait to see it in print form. I am just so excited for this paperback edition. You can pre-order it in the description. I have a link. And my second novel, Better Together, comes out so soon as well. It comes out June 1st and it's approaching so quickly. Like once it's April, May, June, that's two months. Like there's two and a half months left before my second novel comes out. This is an ARC version, so it's soft cover, but the regular edition will be hardcover. The outfit I'm wearing right now is the outfit that I actually put together for pictures in honor of Siri. It matches the outfit she's wearing on the cover as best I could. If you haven't heard yet about the special editions, there is a Barnes and Noble special edition of Better Together that will have Siri on the cover and it will have an extra chapter, which is the epilogue to the epilogue. Oh, and all the Barnes and Noble special editions will be signed. The regular edition has Jamie on the cover. And the other cool thing that's happening is I've partnered with BookSoup. And if you order from BookSoup, you can get a signed personalized edition of Better Together of the regular edition that has Jamie on the cover. And BookSoup ships internationally. So if you're international, you can get a signed person personalized book if you order through BookSoup. I'm gonna leave all those links in the description below. If you don't wanna order from BookSoup and you don't wanna order from Barnes and Noble and get the special edition, you can also get Better Together. Wherever you like to buy your books, thank you so much if you've already ordered it. Thank you so much if you plan on ordering it. I'm so excited and nervous and excited and I and anxious and excited. Like, just so many feelings. The next movie I watched was A Promising Young Woman starring Carrie Mulligan. This film was excellent. 
it's a revenge story and it's one of those films that it's best if you go in knowing nothing. Just watch it. It's such a ride and it gives you so many fucking emotions. It's nominated for Best Picture and Emerald the Director is nominated for Best Director. Oh, I hope it wins all the Oscars. Carrie Mulligan is nominated. It was fantastic. A plus to a promising young woman. <laughs> the next film? Yeah, film. The next film I watched was the Billie Eilish documentary The World's a Little Blurry. It's on Apple TV. This was the best music documentary I have ever watched. A lot of musician documentaries I've started watching and stopped because I was bored or I've watched and I just felt like ah, I didn't really get much out of that. I already knew that stuff. I already did it. Da, 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 da. This was excellent. Every step of the way I was excited. I felt like I was watching a very well put together vlog her life sort of ordeal. Taylor Swift's documentary. I enjoyed it. Like I knew all that stuff. <laughs> like I felt like I was there every step of the way. So it didn't feel like I was getting this new information and feeling this new journey and even even like the Taylor Swift arc, I feel like wasn't finished when that released. I feel like we needed more time. And the people who made a little blurry, like they stayed with Billy. They were with her since 2017. And we came all the way through to her Grammy wins. And it felt like we came a full arc. You know, we went through a lot of stuff with her, a lot of firsts with her. This was her first full album, I believe. When we all fall asleep, where do we go? I feel like the Taylor Swift documentary was almost incomplete. It just didn't have enough. Like it should have followed her till now when she went out with the year for folklore. That's when it would have ended. We should have had all of this shit in between because there's so much more now to her story. It feels like so much more of a full arc. And I feel like if you don't have that full arc for the artist you're following, it doesn't feel like a film. This gets an A plus. I cried, I laughed, and I highly recommend watching it, especially if you're a Billie Eilish fan. But even if you're not, like it's a great, documentary. I watched the Britney Spears special Framing Britney from the New York Times and wow that was it's horrifying to look back at Britney's life and see how the media treated her. The world shat all over her while she was having a mental health breakdown. Like, she was going through so much shit and the media exploited it in every possible way. Watching this documentary made me so sad because I was a huge Britney Spears fan. Watching all this was so sad watching this happen and I like did not understand it. I was like in my beginning high school years. So everyone was just like, Britney went crazy. The fact that right now she's still in a situation where she doesn't make her own decisions is horrifying and she can't get out of it and she hasn't been able to get out of it. I highly recommend watching it if you're interested at all in Britney Spears. That Lindsay Lohan interview on Letterman went viral because of how insensitive and inappropriate that interview was when Lindsay Lohan was about to go to rehab again and try to overcome all these demons she's been fighting and he was just trying to exploit it for laughs and it was horrible. It's the same sort of thing that Britney was going through. My perception of it at that time was so different than what it is now because I just, again, I had like these magazine headlines to tell me what was going on with her. They told it in a way that made it feel like everything that happened was her fault when really she was abused by the media since she became famous. The questions they would ask her were completely inappropriate and sexist and again insensitive in so many different ways and she had no one there to fight for her and tell them that they cannot ask her these things. Um, I'm getting really emotional because I really loved her. <laughs> Growing up she was just like this icon for me. <laughs> so I'll give that documentary an A-. minus. The next movie I watched this month was Moxie. This is an adaptation of the book Moxie. It was directed by Amy Poehler. It was really cute. It's about a young high school girl that starts a feminist zine and while sometimes it's a little on the nose and sometimes the acting, it's toward the beginning there's just something that felt really college filmy. It really gains momentum as you get going and then it gets really cute and great and I had a fabulous time watching it. I'm gonna give it an A-. minus. It was one of the many things I watched this month while signing tip-ins for the Barnes & Noble special edition of Better Together. The next show that I watched while signing tip-ins this month was Ted Lasso on Apple TV and oh my god, I loved it so, so much. I was so sad when I got to the ninth episode and there wasn't a season two yet. I know they're working on season two, but season two isn't out yet. What a heartwarming, wonderful, unexpected journey Ted Lasso was. If you haven't watched it yet, it's 
so good and it's such a happy making show ted lasso is an american football coach i believe for like college football or something and he's hired by the owner of a professional soccer team in england because she got the soccer team in her divorce and to get back at her husband she wants to destroy his team by hiring a coach that's unqualified and ted lasso has never coached soccer before ever he's coached american football he doesn't know anything about soccer but the thing she doesn't know about ted lasso is he's like 150 percent Heart. He's like a male, less fumbly Leslie Nope. That's the closest comparison I can make. So many of the characters are so great. I love Keely so much. I'm so excited for season two. Season one gets an A plus, like thrilled. I was thrilled watching it. I blew through it so fast. It was wonderful. And the last show that I watched this month was Dickinson. And oh my god, it's so excellent. Another show I'm so glad. I'm so glad I have Apple Plus so I can watch these shows now. They're excellent. Dickinson is amazing. It's so clever. It's so fun. It mixes that world of the 1840s with little bits of current pop culture so beautifully. In a lot of ways, Emily Dickinson reminds me of Addie LaRue. It, it, it differs a lot, but there's just little aspects of it that really reminded me of it. It's so fun. They really inject this very modern youthful feel for these 20-somethings in the 1800s leading up to the Civil War. I'm on season two now. And oh, it's so good, you guys. Dickinson, A+. Plus. If there's any Anything else that I should be watching on Apple Plus, definitely let me know, please. <laughs> Those are all the stories I ate this month. I have started A Court of Silver Flames. I am on page 100, so I'll make my way down through that. So big book. I ate so many good stories this month. I'd love to hear what the top tier story you ate this month was. Please recommend stuff on Apple Plus while I still have, I have my free trial for a year. I'm probably gonna end up renewing it because they've got me. They got me with Ted Lasso. Like, I need to see season two. I obviously am watching season two Dickinson right now, and oh, I need to see season two of the morning show when it comes out. Those three shows have latched me into Apple Plus. Good work. My name's Christine. The paperback of Again But Better comes out April 6th. The link to pre-order that's in the description or you can get the regular edition. It's already on sale. You can read it whenever. And Better Together comes out June 1st. If you haven't pre-ordered it yet and you're interested in reading it, I'd really appreciate it if you did so. The link's to pre-order in the description. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm at Xine May on Twitter and Instagram. I make videos as much as I can. I will see you next time. Goodbye!